Right, hello everyone, this is Martin. As you can see today we're going to build a calculator uh, as an iPhone app using Xcode and Swift. Uh, a few months ago I created a Hello World program to show you the basics of Xcode, how to use it, how to write a little bit of Swift and how to create an application and build an application and test it. Um, so I thought I needed to take the next step. It's been a few months, I've been traveling but the next step is this calculator and it's only a very small step really um, it's got a bit more code than before and it's got a lot more buttons the main takeaway from this uh, is going to be um, using event handlers to handle multiple events um, all the numbers are going to be handled by one function called numbers and the operations cancel divide multiply subtract add and equals is going to be handled by the operations function over here and then I'll explain the code and what they're doing um, so before we go any further um, basically the how to create buttons and labels is shown in the hello world it's the same uh, same as uh, as that program um, it's just that there's more of them this time so rather than redo this whole application as a demonstration I'm just going to show you the key points so if I go over to this kind of blank project over here I'll use this to um, create the buttons and show you how you how you use multiple uh, how you control multiple events so we want the uh, this little thing here it brings up the um, the object library so we want a button so we'll bring a button over and we'll make it fairly big and I will want to color it so we go in here and we look at the view and we want the background color I've got loads of colors already here just to show it again I'll bring up the custom thing and I can choose all sorts of colors for it um, probably a light gray is probably a good color for it and also for the the text color probably black and uh, we will make it um, we'll make it bigger than this we'll make it sort of whatever you feel is good um, and this is going to be a button that is represents the number zero a uh, number zero if, if you think numbers are, if you think zero is a number um, All right, uh, there we are. I just wanted to make this bold. Now, how big should you make this button? Well, basically, you've got to measure the width of your uh, of your iPhone and divide it by uh, four, and then have each button that width and height so that it's square. Um, I think it turns out, and I will do it now, you use this little measuring thing here, uh, that 90 by 90 works for, at least for an iPhone 6X Plus. But uh, just as an example, there we go. And so now I've created this button. So what I want to do now is create some more buttons. So what I can do, in fact, is copy it. Oh, what did I copy? And uh, paste it. And the only thing I want to change on this is its name. Instead of zero, it's going to be called one. And then we'll paste it again. And this will be two. Excel and so on and you go all the way up to you got zero to nine so the key is I want to be able to use one function for this so I want to be able to set a value in here called the tag and I'm going to call start at one just to be completely generic so this is tag one and now I'm going to put it into the code select it control button drag it over uh, this is going to be an action and it's going to be called numbers.
and it has to be a UI button because we want to be able to access the tag value. And we'll just make a little gap in here like this. And now I'm going to select one, give it a tag value of two. I should set up the other tag value while I'm here. This will be three. And so all the values are tagged. And so it's control. And this time you drag it into the, th the function. And you let go. And you get this one. And you drag it into the function. And now this function will trigger off any one of, whenever, whenever zero, one, or two is pressed. And then, so let's have a look at two again. It has a tag of three. So if you want to know what number's been pressed or been chosen, you get the sender, which is that button, dot tag uh, minus one. Why can't you have, why can't you call uh, zero and have a tag zero? I don't, well, I do know but I'm going to leave that as an exercise for the student. Um, so there, that's how you do it. You, you tag them and you drag them into the same, into the same function. So that's, that's what was done here. I dragged zero out. There's obviously some uh, cosmetic things I've done here. I've colored it the same way as the calculator on the iPhone. So all zero to nine is handled by numbers and the calculations by, uh, and the operations by a function called operations using the same method, dragging the buttons into the into the code. So what does the code have to do? Well, it's pretty simple. Basically, it's going to, when you press one of these numbers, it's going to concatenate this lay to this label, whatever number was pressed before, plus the number you just press, or plus meaning concatenate concatenated with. So uh, if I press 1, it'll be concatenated with nothing, so 1 will appear here. If I press 2, it'll be concatenated with 1, and you'll see the number 12 here. And each time, because you don't know how many numbers they're going to press, you're going to convert it to a double, the, the whole label text. So when you're done, you have, you have the whole number saved in something called number on screen. The next thing that's going to happen is that someone's going to press uh, an operation because they want to multiply it by something or or whatever, they might press the multiply button. So we there's a couple of conditions here. So if the label text is not blank, the button pressed is not clear, and the button pressed is not equals. Save the entered number, and then reset the display, the number on screen parameter, ready to get the next number. So here it is, label text not equal to blank, center tax, send a tag it's not equal to 11 remember the tag we talked about before that would be cancel and send a tag not equal to 16 which is the equal sign then the previous number equals the current number on the display we we did save it in uh, number on screen before but i'm saving it directly from the label again into something called previous number and the operation that was pressed equals um, is saved in operation and then we reset it, label.text is nothing, number on screen is nothing. And then the person goes back and starts hitting the numbers to get the next number. And once again, number on screen is the concatenation of the numbers they entered. These variables are up here, number on screen, previous number and operation, and they're initialized to zero, which is always the good, good practice. All right, so... Um, so now they've entered the second number and they press equals. So if the center tag is 16, which is equals, I can switch on the value that was entered. Um, this is really, this is like in the, in the C, C coding language, which is a swip, switch case operation or a case statement. People call them all sorts of things. What they are functionally is else if. So we already said else if the tag is equals, and then we're going to say else if it's 16, else if, third, uh, else if operations equals 12, else if, else if operations equals 13, and so on. The difference between this case statement and a C case statement is that it always breaks. 
So as soon as there's a hit, it breaks out of that out of that loop, this loop right here. It needs it. There we go. It breaks out of this down to here. Um, so if it is 12, then we're going to do a d division of previous number and number on screen, and so on. If it's 13, it's times, and then there's a subtract, plus, and if for some reason you end up down here, I can't think how, you had garbage in there or something, it would say invalid entry. Else if the clear button is pressed, uh, in other words, else if the sender tag is 11, uh, label.txt is zero, everything zeroed out, and that's the end of the story. So let's build this. This will be should be coming up any minute now. Bring up the simulator. Here we go. Oh, this is an iPhone XR. Well, I don't suppose it really matters. So let's do uh, 5 times 8 equals 40 divided by 4 equals 10 divided by 7 equals 1.428571428571428 um, and so on. So that's that's how that works. Uh, let's get quit the simulator. There is the code. Don't worry about that. It didn't stop. There we go. And there's the calculator. So that's it for now. Um, it's fairly straightforward. You can photograph the screen to, to get the code if you want. Um, the So what's coming up next? So that, that, that's like the... What we've done so far then is really Hello World and Hello World Part 2. It's very simple a single view code. Now there are multiple view codes and we'll look at multiple multiple view operate um, applications and we'll look at those. Um, there is also uh, games. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is a kind of uh, Space Invaders type game. So it'll have moving targets, missiles firing, explosions, uh, sound effects and so on. And that'll give you the basis of creating a, a simple graphic game. And then, there's the, and then there's databases. In other words, if you make a really big app, especially games, and you want to keep scores and competitive scores with the other users, you need a central database, which means you need a, a Bluehost um, hosting service or some other hosting service. Bluehost is one of the best, I think. Um, there's plenty of them, though. You, you just go to Google and, and say re review uh, hosting services, and you'll get the best one from that, really. And whatever you choose, they they have SQL services and databases, and then you can connect this uh, application uh, to send requests to it and so on, and that will be explained also. And that's how the really big apps with all the competitive users uh, are managed. So that's it for now. I'll see you again next time. Thanks very much.